Hey there, folks, did you catch that team preview? Because I sure didn't. Not during the battle, at least. Uh, this is a battle against Pokekazam. We had it through the Smogon Wi-Fi Battle Finder, and then thereafter through VMs. We kept on trying to have this Ubers battle because no one was doing Ubers on, um, the Wi-Fi Battle Finder, and we just kept getting disconnected. And so each time that he'd brought his team before, he hadn't had, uh, a Kyogre. And so I sent out Onion here, just sacrificing it, because I know it's not gonna be useful, this battle. But if you actually did catch that, uh, that first screen right there, this time he brought his Kyogre. I just had the same team up, I thought we were using the same teams. Uh, we didn't say same team, so it's completely my fault. Um, here, I've actually did a modification to my, uh, Giratina here where I put it, I uh, gave it a uh, Shadow Sneak, and as you see it really pays off there. So, yeah, I mean, this is really a good example of why you really need to look at Team Premium, because so far I'm thinking, okay, it's not the best thing in the world what's going on here, but it's not the worst either. Uh, I didn't realize that my Deoxys was outsped, I, I didn't think that he would be jolly, so that's what happened there. Um, so here, I'm, my avocado is going for an earthquake. Blah blah. I was just trying to take out his Zekrom. Um, here, I brick break. Blah blah blah. Actually, earthquake is the better move, as I've said before. He stealth rocks. So this battle actually isn't just isn't really very interesting. I, I'm just gonna tell you now. I get, get completely swept because he does send out his Kyogre, and I'm like, wait, Kyogre, what the hell is it doing here? You didn't have Kyogre on your team. And he apologized for it. He said, you know, I didn't know we were using same teams. And I said, really, it's not your fault. We didn't say same team, so I can't blame you for not bringing the same team. So at this point, the battle is basically over. Um, you know, there's no... I, I mean, I could have probably pulled um, something out and you know, maybe save something, but it's just not going to happen. I also make some really stupid misplays, but at this point, I just... my heart wasn't in it. Um, my strategy would have been completely, completely different had I only had a Kyogre because Ludicolo is a great Kyogre counter and is awesome in the rain, and I could have actually done probably quite a lot with it. Um, I'm gonna try to take out this Zekrom. Uh, I'm hoping that he hits himself in the confusion. He switches out into Bliss, uh, Chansey. Ugh, I hate Chansey so much. This thing, you know, uh, it's obviously going to sponge my Draco Meteor, but I've got nothing I can do, so uh, this battle is over. He toxics me just to add insult to injury. Um, and Draco Meteor again, now I'm at minus six. This is just so funny. And now he's gonna wish and <laughs> cry, cry, cry. Who knows, maybe I'll get a crit. And I do actually get a crit, so yeah, I've taken down his Chansey. Oh my god, was this a bad battle. Um, do I switch out here? I don't think I have enough health to switch out. And he takes me out with an outrage anyway. So yeah, that was the end of the battle. Always, always look at the team preview and write down your opponent's team. Moral of the story. And now with that horrific train wreck out of the way, I can present the battle that I actually wanted to give you today, and that's this battle against Kenpatch 2, also of Smogon, and as you can see, this is my kind of Ubers. My opponent's actually only uh, bringing two Ubers to this Ubers battle. Uh, now granted, th that is Garchomp in Sand, but you know, that's what Groudon is for, getting rid of the Sand. So I go ahead and lead off my with my Gondwana, my Groudon, just to get the uh, sun all nice and bright. He leads off with Roserade, and I don't want to be put to sleep right Right now, in fact, I'm actually going to send out Onion, um, thinking that, you know, uh, it's pretty good as Death Fodder, but he's not going to be doing anything else in this battle, since, you know, Sand or Sun, neither of which are going to be good for me. Uh, and amazingly, he goes for Leaf Storm first turn instead, so I actually leave in Onion to die, but now I get to be Sleep Fodder, and so it actually gets to do something useful in this battle. Good job, Onion! I go ahead and send out Booth. You know, it is boosted by the sun. He can't put me to sleep. This is going to be excellent. He's going to go ahead and do, uh, set up Toxic Spikes. This is your standard Toxic Spikes lead. I'm going to go ahead and go for the Blue Flare, knowing that it's almost certainly Sash, but, you know, it's Blue Flare. It's so fun! Oh, look at that. And it takes him down to his Sash, and, you know, that's okay. But I get the Bird Hacks! So I was like, yes, this battle's going so much better than that, than that other one. He does manage to set up a second layer of Toxic Spikes. And against my team, you know, this is a pretty heavily offensive team, but it's actually not going to be a problem, as I'm going to show you in a second. My opponent goes ahead and sends out Titar. Obviously going to want to switch out. And I'm going to go ahead and send out Avocado my Excadrill, who unfortunately, this is the last battle you're going to see with my Excadrill, um, because it got replaced. Uh, it turns out I really don't need a spinner that badly on this team. Uh, I go ahead and use Rapid Spin, so that's great. That's so great for me. So Ice Beam, this is, uh, looks like it's a Tyranoboa set. 
Uh, although then it would have probably carried Fire Blast. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go for the Brick Break here, expecting it to KO, uh, because, you know, it's 4x effective, but he actually survives. I am Jolly and not Adamant, so that's probably why. It's gonna go ahead and Ice Beam again. I think that's really interesting that he doesn't carry the Earthquake, it appears. Uh, so now he's gonna switch out, wanting to save his sand for later. As he sends out his Heracross, I switch up to Earthquake, and, you know, it's gonna resist it, uh, but he would have resisted Brick Break too. At least here I do a little bit more damage. Damage. Gonna go for the rock slide here. I'm like, that's a dead Heracross. Of course, forgetting that it's actually not super effective, so it's no surprise that he doesn't die. And I'm gonna get KO'd by a close combat. But that's okay. Avocado spun away those rocks. I don't have to worry about. Or, and the, really, the toxic spikes. The toxic spikes were the serious issue. Heracross is actually down to very low health. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send out Duroc, my Giratina O, and predicting the obvious switch, I'm going to just go ahead and set up a sub. But he brings out Jirachi, and now I do carry Earthquake, and that is gonna be super effective, but depending on his set, he could just uh, stall me out, and indeed this does appear to be a Protect stalling set, it's probably Wish Protect, so I'm really, I really should switch out here. Uh, and not just accumulate all this damn uh, this damn uh, sandstorm damage, but I think you know who knows maybe I can KO in one hit. I cannot KO in one hit, not even close. And so he's going to be able to wish stall me out. And I really am just wondering when it is that I uh, got wise and actually switched out my Duroc. It wasn't this turn. I think it was the next turn. I thought maybe he would predict. Um, my, uh, you know, I thought he might predict the switch and not go for the protect, but no, he does, and he was just playing it safe. I go ahead and go for the earthquake just because I want to get some damage on this Jirachi before I switch out, and I get him down fairly low, and he's going to go for the wish, and the protect next turn is going to be totally and completely obvious, so I remember now with 100% certainty that I do switch out on this next turn, which is good because if I hadn't, that would have been the most idiotic thing in the world. So I send out Gondwana, who has... Uh, you know, adamant max attack and get stabbed from this. So that's gonna be excellent. He's gonna go, he's gonna get back up to almost full health, but, you know, that's really okay. Actually, yeah, almost full health still. Um, he's gonna go ahead and body slam me, but, you know, as long as he, you know, he does get the para hacks, that's okay. I go ahead and set up the stealth rocks thinking that my opponent would switch out. My opponent didn't switch out. Oh, I also thought it could protect, because it actually could protect since I switched the last turn, so protect failed instead of actually succeeding. Whatever. My opponent's gonna go for the wish. I'm going to go for the earthquake, and I'm just hoping that it's gonna take out this Jirachi in one hit. If it doesn't, I'm gonna have a problem, because how the hell am I gonna get rid of it? He survives with just a sliver of HP. Uh, and is going to get back health with Wish at some point? Oh, I guess he used Wish this turn. Sorry, I'm not really paying attention. He's going to go ahead and Iron Head me rather than protecting uh, just to try to get the flinch. And, you know, his the chance of either Paralysis or Flinch is well above 50%. So, really, it was a bit of hacks that I broke through that and KO'd. So that's great. I've taken it out, and I'm happy. Now out comes Garchomp. Um, he's going to go ahead and sub. And I think I just go ahead and Dragon Tail. Yeah, so this is why I've repl So on my new uh, Groudon, the Groudon that replaced this Groudon, it's now an Impish support Groudon. I've taken out Dragon Tail and put in Roar instead because Roar actually goes through the sub, sub ignores the sub completely, and it has 100% accuracy, and yeah. I mean, it's just the better move, really, if you are worried about phasing. So Tyranitar is back out, I get paralyzed, that's really not good. He's down to practically no HP, if I can take out the Tyranitar, it'll be excellent, because then I can, you know, switch out my Gondwana, set it back in, set up the Sun, it'll be excellent. Send out Onion here for Death Fodder. Uh, as my opponent's Tyranitar goes for the Stealth Rocks, I really wish I'd stayed in and just taken it out, but oh well. Uh, Onion's asleep, but there's no chance of it waking up. I mean, I guess there's a sliver of a chance of it waking up, but it's really not very likely. He goes ahead and pursuits me, I'm not sure why, I mean, I was gonna stay in, but it takes me out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Tyranitar's actually gaining back a bit of health. I'm gonna go ahead and send Gondwana back out, get the sun back, and I'm actually predicting him to switch. Uh, but just in case he doesn't, I think I do go for the Earthquake. Maybe I go for the Dragon Claw. That would be excellent if I went for the Dragon not dragon Tail, not Dragon Claw, sorry. Um, Heracross, Death Fodder. I do go for the Dragon Tail, expecting the switch. Also thinking that maybe at that range of health I could have KO'd his T-Tar. T-Tar is back out. Uh, I'm really not fearing the Ice Beam too much, but I guess I should be a little bit concerned about it. I don't know. 
Okay, here he goes for the Ice Beam, and I'm thinking, I can probably take that. I am, you know, max HP, and indeed it's going to take three hits to KO. I don't get paralyzed, I take out that Tyranitar, and that is excellent. I have won the Weather War as soon as I switch Gondwana out and then back in. I love saying its name much more than I like saying Groudon. Uh, for those of you who don't know and are like, what the hell's up with the name Gondwana? Um, Gondwana Land was one of the two supercontinents along with... what? And Falassa? I don't remember. Um, basically, it started. Uh, uh, sorry, supercontinents. Basically, back before all the continental drifts, and you had all these continents. Um, you just had one mega continent that had split apart into two sub mega continents. Uh, one of which was um, Panthalassa, the other one of which was Gondwana Land. Anyway, never mind about that. You didn't come here for an ancient geography lesson. Back to the battle. Um, Durak is taken out. I probably shouldn't have sacrificed it, but. Eh, whatever. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be uh, pretty useful. He goes for the dual chop here, uh, and that's actually doing a fair amount of damage, but I'm just hoping that I can take out... Oh, I'm going to take out a sub with the Earthquake. That's really not up for debate. And at least he doesn't have that damn Sand Veil. Oh, God. I, if I would gotten hacked by Sand Veil in this match, I would have been so upset. But I've got my son up. I have won the Weather Wars. I don't know why he goes for the Swords Dance here. I mean, he knows that I'm doing lots of attacks. I get paralyzed, so maybe he was just hoping for the Parahacks, but that was a really risky play. That was a really, really risky play, and it paid off for him, but he's going to go ahead and fire a thing. <laughs> it misses, and it's just so hilarious that it misses. I go for the Dragon Tail here just for the super effective hit and for the fact that it's going to phase him. It does not KO, though. Um, so out is going to come as Arceus. It looks to be an extreme killer Arceus, and I'm going to have to be concerned about this. He's going to go ahead and use extreme speed, but I am so bulky that I think I can survive that, and indeed I do. So he's got the life orb. This is a standard extreme killer Arceus. Going to go for the earthquake here, and it looks like it's going to be a solid two-hit KO. Um, he's going to go for the swords dance here. Not sure why. Really not sure why he wouldn't have just gone for... Uh, extreme speed, or even, you know, another attacking move would have been just as good. Earthquake is going to take him out, and that's a dead Arceus. I don't have to worry about that at all. So now I think he's going to be back out uh, to his last Pokemon, which is Garchomp, and he's going to go out and Swords Dance. I don't know why. Maybe he thought that, oh, I guess he was hoping for the Parahax, and he knew that he couldn't one-hit KO me with Dual Chop. That's a dead Garchomp. That is the end of the battle, and I've actually won a battle with this team. This team has been completely redone now, and it's now actually a really good team IMO. You'll see it with battle number 89, which will be uploaded in like three weeks. So hold on to your hats. So long, folks.